You're watching Final Score with Wes Moore on Fox 16. Hey, welcome on back to the final score. I know it says with Wes Moore, but on this show, it's without Wes Moore? I'm pretty sure. It's usually just you and I, but yeah. Wes is on vacation. Wes is so on vacation right now. He's, we hope he's having a good time, but he's with us in spirit. But you know, what's a sports show without some friendly sports banter? I've got Nick with me today, and we're going to discuss some of the most relevant sports news locally and nationally. Yeah, we'll be hitting all three of the major sports. As always, we'll talk Razorbacks, but we'll dive deeper into the high school scene while we're at it. And if you're a fan of the show, you know already I have the edge oh when it comes gosh. to competition. I beat Troy in a very lopsided 2K affair last month, winning by 25 in an all-star game. So Troy's not just gunning for a better debate, but for a little bit redemption, Troy, maybe? I mean, redemption, sure. I let you win the first one, obviously. So uh, For right now, I have bragging rights. But by the end of the show, so. that could be a little different. We'll it's see. going to be a little it, bit different. Good right? I'm very sure about that. All right, I'm ready to go. But, Nick, we need to talk about the state of football right now. The SEC is allowing student athletes to return to campus on June 8th for voluntary workouts. And from what Razorback Athletic Director Hunter Juracek has said, it looks like there's going to be a football season this fall. Look, it's good to get the Hogs back on the hill, but of course, unprecedented times call for unprecedented safety measures. What's going to happen? They already announced that there's going to be daily screening starting June 8th once they get into the facilities. And if they have symptoms of coronavirus, they are going to be tested. That's different from other SEC schools. They're always having tests for coronavirus before they even work out. Also, of course, they're going to be sanitizing their workout stations, maintaining social distancing throughout. That's going to be a little bit weird. I mean, as a former high school football player, having done workouts, they're doing something even harder now yeah. to imagine that they're going to be distancing and having these weird restraints. That's odd. And of course, June 1st is when high schoolers will start wearing face masks for film study. It's going to be odd, but like Coach Rhodes said, the linebackers coach just yesterday to us, they're just glad they're getting them back together. Absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of rules for the players, but you know, also we got to talk about the fans. Are they going to be able to watch from inside the stadium? Iowa State started all of this talk because they plan on having roughly 50% of their stadium filled but it's with season ticket holders and they would have to make a donation in order to do that. I mean, it's a good start and it sounds like other teams that are leaning towards this, including Arkansas and a state, but is it first come first serve? Do donation sizes matter? And will students be allowed into the stadium as well? I mean, all that's still up in the air, but they are expecting some fans this fall. So I think that's really good news for all of us, especially us sports reporters. Absolutely. And hey, we all still have three months till football yep. season goes. So if we're already getting back in the talks of having 50% capacity, yep. hopefully if coronavirus curbs down, by August, we'll be right. talking about full capacity across the country. Keep your fingers crossed. I have my fingers crossed. And so now we're going to be talking about the Razorback basketball incoming class, but who do you think is going to be the biggest surprise player next season that's not a freshman? They're already there. What do you think, Troy? Okay, I got this, Nick. All right, it's Connor Vanover, and this isn't even a debate. All right, I already win this one. He's seven foot three, and look at these highlights, Nick. He's shooting from beyond the three-point line. He's seven foot three, and you know what the three stands for? That's where he's money from. He sat out this past season on Arkansas because he transferred from Cal, but his freshman year with the Golden Bears, he averaged seven and a half points and three rebounds. Uh, listen, that's not super impressive. However, um, Cal was just really bad that year, so don't really look at his stats, but his last 10 games, he averaged nearly 13 points and five rebounds. Now he's bringing that to Fayetteville. He led the Golden Bears with 35 block shots. That's making his mama proud too, who played for the Razorbacks back in the day, and she has the school record for block shots in the game with nine. Yeah, so it runs in the blood. Connor, he gained a lot of confidence in his freshman year. And with Musselman's help, I mean, he could be incredible. And he's going to be a great player next season. 7-3, Nick. Beat that. It's kind of a no-brainer pick, isn't it? 7-3, just pick the tall guy. And he I mean, shoots three-pointers, Nick. Sure, he does sure. everything. But how about we talk about a guy who's already been rocking the bud, who's earned Musselman's trust already. Okay. And that man is incoming junior Desi Sills. The guy shot a team best 45.6% from three over the last 14 games. Over there, he was draining threes toward the ends of the season. Look, he played in all 32 games, starting 24. He faced a little bit of adversity in that sophomore season, coming off the bench in some games. But he had to earn Muss's respect. He's a court general around the court. He's getting everybody the ball. He's going to be a great player for the Razorbacks this year and with Moses Moody, KK Robinson coming back in, these incoming freshmen. He's already played with these guys and including Ethan Henderson. So I'm confident. Hey, look, even in Arkansas as a high scorer, number three player in the state, a consensus top 50 point guard in the nation. He's going to show why he was ranked that high in his junior campaign. So look now 7-3 ladies and gentlemen. Okay, he didn't even get a chance to play. 
He's going he's gonna to rock Fayetteville next I'm gonna year. I'm going to say hard over height. Okay. Okay, listen. All right. I'm, I grew up small. You did not. All right. <laughs> I am all about the heart. But you got a seven foot three guy who can shoot three pointers. Nobody can beat that. How many seven three guys do you know? I can't really. Yeah, any. exactly. Yeah, no, no. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's switch let's gears. Let's see Desi just swat a ball. Just right up That'd be great. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. We'll see him practice. All right, I then, win that round. Yeah. Right. <laughs> let's okay. go. Let's keep going. All right. Look, <laughs> switching our gears to baseball, where two hogs are set to go pro very soon. Outfielder Heston Kerstad and shortstop Casey Martin are both projected first rounders this year. The MLB draft is right around the corner, guys. Names will be called on June 10th. So who's going to go earlier? I, for one, say Heston. Look, okay. there's a reason why Easy. he's ranked 10th in the MLB sure. draft rankings. They don't just throw those out of nowhere, okay? Right. There's reasons behind that. Look, he was a 36th round pick by the Mariners as a Texas high schooler in 2017, along with Martin, okay? okay. He led yeah. Arkansas to back-to-back -back College World Series appearances in their first two years of college. His 14 homers in 2018 broke the school freshman record. He already started strong. He encored that with 17 as a sophomore. When you look at that 10 to 15 range in that MLB draft, I think that's a perfect landing spot and look I know Casey Martin's a good player projected first rounder right. but when you have a dominant player like that in the SEC Heston Kirst had both juniors but that guy has the edge for me I think the only other person in the entire country has more raw power than Heston Kirst is Spencer Torkelson from Arizona State my alma mater but yeah Heston he could go in the first round but I'm gonna play devil's ad advocate and go with Casey Martin and listen he didn't have the best 2020 he only played in 15 games but he still hit 271 with 16 hits 10 RBIs 10 walks and six stolen bases numbers aren't amazing all right I'll, I'll say that right now but that's because he just set the bar so high his first two seasons so you look at his stats they're still great but it doesn't really compare to freshman and sophomore year. He can do everything, and he can do it all well. He came into the season as the number three shortstop in the country, which is very valuable, especially for those MLB scouts. He has fielding percentage over 900 in his career. So if teams are looking for that all-around great shortstop, then I think you got to go with Casey. But really, it's hard to go against Heston. I think the last MLB projection I saw, he's going 10th. Yep, 10th so. versus hopefully Casey Martin does crack that first run. I've seen him anywhere between to. 18th to he's all the going. way to 30. Right, his favorite team is the Red Sox. So if you're hoping for Ooh. a good team for Casey, you know. Right, yeah, the next Xander Bogats. Exactly, right? <laughs> Throwing out my Boston accent there. <laughs> All right, what are we doing now? What are we talking about? We're talking about some golf. Read. Look, a week ago we had the match where four legendary athletes played golf, Tiger Woods and Peyton Manning against Tom Brady and Phil Mickelson. Who would you like to see on the match part two? I'll start this one off. This is an easy one. I want to see Ricky Fowler and Steph Curry. That is my team. All right, Ricky Fowler, he loves to have fun, and he's one of the best golfers in the world, and he's the, one of the best consistent ones too. Steph He's the greatest shooter of all time. Not only that, the dude loves golf. I don't. I think if he wasn't a professional basketball player, he would definitely play golf. He also hosts that show, Holy Moly. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's mini golf combined with wipeout. Super entertaining. Uh, so the dude just loves golf and he loves to have fun. So I can expect a lot of trash talking in that. So it'd be entertaining for everybody. But I will say, if there is going to be a part two, we need to see some Charles Barkley. Or at least have him as one of the commentators because that makes everything so much better. Yeah, if we so. could see Charles Barkley swing too. I mean, oh, that, that man, makes yeah. it a million times better, Gosh, right? I mean, it's like the worst. It's like watching a really bad movie, but loving it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> loving a really bad movie. Okay, right, well, beat that, yeah, Nick. Yeah, I know. Chef Curry would be nice to see yeah. on the green. With I the like puck. it. But but give me Jordan Spieth and Tony Romo. Of course, Jordan Spieth, one of the best we've seen since wow. Tiger's prime. Just two and Texas of course, guys. I know I'm a homer, right? I yes. went to UT Austin. So did he. I'm from Dallas. He's from Dallas. And I have a bond with him. You know, I relate with him, right? Besides being an all-star at golf. So he's won three major wins. 2015 FedEx Cup championship. He's one of the best we've seen in a long long time give me speed and of course Tony Romo you want to have a good guy to be mic'd up in the golf yeah, cart let's talk one. about one of the best sports casters living today okay and the highest paid for a good reason <laughs> and not, only, that, good not reason. only is he good in the booth he's good in the green because he's been invited to PGA Tour events not only that but he was once so the was only Steph. okay but he was once the only professional athlete as of 2012 he given a handicap he just finished a recent event plus five, ranking 146th and ahead of six pro golfers. For that's their entire career, I'm going to play golf. Well, he has a whole other career. He's a former football player, and he's still beating out some guys. So give me Spieth and Romo. That'd be a blast. I think a little bit better than yours. Well, we already saw two quarterbacks. All right, we got to switch it up. Let's go to the NBA. Get but, some other athletes in there. But how about Jeez. some actual sportscasters? And, of course, quarterbacks yeah, sure. are the biggest position in sports. 
So yeah. if, if it wasn't Peyton and Brady, let's just say it was maybe a yeah, guard. but Steph is a better gorgeous. athlete than Tom Brady, or not Tom Brady. I'm sorry, than Tony Romo. Well, I forgot his name because he's a scrub. Oh, oh really? He's a scrub? Have he's you ever a seen scrub. Scrambler? That's why he went to okay. commentating. Oh, and by he the can't way, by play. the way, for anyone wondering, I'm from Dallas, not a Cowboys fan. This is not a total, you know, Cowboy. He's a homer. homer. Oh my okay. gosh! All right, if that was the case, let me get Aaron Rodgers as the Packer fan. He's right, done talking. Okay. Oh, we're done talking. We're running out of time, but don't worry. The final score is going to come back right after the break. All right, Ricky Fowler, Steph Curry. Okay.